Note to self, it is very hard to choose which of my creative passions I want to focus on because I tend to follow my inspiration and while I used to be huge in photography and I took pictures everywhere I went and spent hours editing them and great satisfaction in posting them, um, I haven't had time for that recently and I've completely been focusing on painting. But I recently looked back at my photography Instagram and recalled the joy of photography and I compared the quality, in my opinion, the quality of the photographs I made two years ago when I was taking pictures all the time with the quality of my paintings now, which it's true that I have been painting and drawing my whole life, but only in the last few years in college classes do I really think that I've improved that much. So I feel like I still have a lot of potential for growth in painting, and that's something that I can sit down and do. At this point in my life, it is an easy hobby to maintain because after coming home from work, I can just paint. I don't have to go anywhere. I can do it inside or outside. It's simple. But painting isn't as portable as photography. And when I plan on moving out of the country within the next year, I, before that point, I'm going to have to narrow down my painting supplies and choose vital pieces that I want to bring with me. And during that time when I'm exploring a new place, I will probably be taking more photos and focusing on photography more. And then what may follow is that I'll feel inspired to write because all of my new experiences will have me reflecting on ways that I've grown and things that I've learned and how life is different in the new country. I am a creative person and creating things is my calling. Whether I'm taking photos, painting, drawing, writing, you name it. I know that I'm going to continue to be a creator in my lifetime. And I want to improve as much as possible. I want to explore my gift and I want to improve on it. But if I have three creative focuses, that leaves a third of my lifetime to focus on each one. If I want to truly improve to my highest potential, then I need to choose one medium to focus on. Theoretically, that would be the case. Um, but realistically, I can't choose one because I like all three. So what I think I'm going to do going forward is work in a project-based cycle, using the materials and the schedule of my current living situation to work on something that I can put the most energy into and be inspired by my present moment while I work on it. So I'm saying rather than trying to push through writer's block for years, which some writers do, I can turn to photography or I can turn to painting. As I was saying before, right now, painting works for me. When I move, I know I'll be taking more photos. And later on, when I have more life experience, I know I'll want to write about it. In a perfect world, you would feel inspired to work on your medium of choice all the time, but as a multiple, multi-creative person, that's probably not going to be the case. So when you lose inspiration or when medium stops being convenient for you to pursue, that's when you can switch the other one. And rather than just having a rocky several months for photography, because you can't go anywhere, you can focus on painting instead. This is a way where you can still be working to your highest potential while working in a, with a diverse range of mediums. You don't have to worry about dividing your time by three. Rather, work with whatever suits you best in the moment. Work until your inspiration runs out. And maybe after a while, you'll have a stroke of clarity 
and you'll find a way to combine the mediums in another project. Either way, that's just another project that you can finish and move on from. I'd started a video previously on this topic on how a person can choose which one medium to focus on. But now that I'm facing this dilemma in my life in a very real way, I reconsidered the problem and I realized if you are already invested in several mediums, you cannot choose just one because you're limiting yourself that way. Now what I think is you should do everything you want to do, but don't ever force it. If you aren't in the mood to paint, don't force it because you'll create your best quality of work and do have the most growth when you're working in an inspired state. If you are working on a creative project and you're not feeling inspired, you're approaching it with more of a work mindset and in my opinion, that's no way to get very far while working on something creative because you need the spontaneity and the joy and the energy that is so unique to the inspired state. I think the only downside to my approach would be if you are trying to jump into an all art career in which your main source of income is what you're creating because while you can make the switch to relying on several to, while it's possible to profit from having many creative focuses, you might already, for example, have somewhat of a following for your painting and not as much for your photography, in which case you'd have to work a little extra to get those mediums to a more level playing field so they're both profiting you. Of course, the way you choose to balance your creation in terms of monetization is completely unique to your situation and that actually adds a layer of complexity to the situation. Um, but if we are talking in terms of working to your highest potential and taking advantage of inspiration when it strikes you, then my philosophy going forward is go for it and do what you're hungry to do in the moment. Another thought that just occurred to me is that for those of us who have many creative focuses, it might just be that we don't have ample experience in any one of them to decide which one we really have room to move forward in. Every medium requires a different set of assets and requires a different tool belt to master and while it's possible that you pr possess all of those naturally and have cultivated all of those to, to an extent throughout your experience, if you continue to work on, that, um, work on them undoubtedly, you will find that you are still stronger in one or the other. And down the road, again, if we're talking about profit, about making your art into your livelihood, um, and maybe you will find that one suits you better for that. That was kind of a tangent. When I started talking, I meant to say that through exploration of our creative passions, we will find the one that we want to master or that we have the potential, the most potential to master. But to wrap this up, I'm going to say just be chill. Um, create when inspiration strikes make what you want to make work on projects think of your work in terms of projects rather than in terms of being a creator in that medium and later if you want you can decide what you are I don't think it's important to know what kind of an artist you are if you're creative and you make things all the time and that's what you like to do keep doing it and because inspiration for different mediums may strike in different situations, I think while pursuing all of them, 
in their unique time frames, their, the unique times that they interest you, you will still be progressing at a high rate and propelling to your full potential. These are my thoughts on being a multi-creative person. I still have kind of a rough script of what I wrote for a practical guide to choosing one medium and it's possible I will post that later if that's something you're interested in watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I apologize for the tangent style that I tend to speak in. Remember to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time.